Hi everyone, Nevada Nail Person. So today's video is just, in summary, a comparison of what I believe to have been two similar products. Um, recently on the ELF website, they had a new product called Aqua Primer Mist. And I said, gee, that sounds strangely familiar, like my Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. Now, I'm a big fan of this primer water. Um, this came out about, I don't know the exact dates or times, but about a year and a half ago, this product came out, Smashbox Camera Ready BB Water, and they recommended using this product um, as a primer to use this because it's a very liquid aqueous base. It's very runny. If you shake it, you can hear it. I don't want to open it because I don't want to start something that I'm not going to finish right away. But it got me on the trail of using this primer, photo finish primer water. Now typically if I were to use a foundation, I would just use a straight up primer, Hangover RX, um, something like that along those lines. Um, a true primer. I don't really like the kind with the silicon in it, but in fact, I really don't like the Smashbox, the original primer, that slippery one. So I prefer something like this. So I do tend to use more BB cream. So I was using this product and liking it. So when I saw something came out that sounded very similar, I said, okay, let's try it. So I tried it and of course there's quite the price point difference. Um, this guy is $32 and the elf is 8 So right there you go, why, you know, why would you want the Smashbox at 32 if you can get the elf at 8 So I decided to go on this journey, which um, <laughs> it took longer than I thought it would. Um, basically, disclaimer, I am purely a consumer. I never studied chemistry. I don't know how to pronounce some of these words. I don't know what it fully means. I used the web as a source of information and, and trying to gain information on the product or the ingredients in both of these products to compare them to basically see are they the same. So that's what I did. So basically I created this sheet. I spent a lot of time on this. I listed out the products in um, the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water and what their functions are and the same for ELF and their ingredients as well. And I used a couple of resources. I would say probably 95% of my resource would be from um, ewg.org uh, backslash Skin Deep, which is the environmental working group. So basically, they put ratings on chemicals, whether um, uh, whether it's carcinogen or it's an irritant or whatnot. And in particularly in the uh, Skin Deep section, it breaks down. It's really quite interesting just to go on there. Um, if you look up an ingredient, it'll tell you what function in the cosmetics world it would um, purpose. Plus, it also had another function where you could see a listing of products that currently contain that ingredient. So if you, for example, know you're allergic to a particular ingredient, if you were to plug that in that site, it would pull up all the products that would contain that product that you shouldn't be using. So it could be helpful for you. So of course I will link all that below. And I will also, I've also copied this to a Google Doc as well, so I will list that below. But I will be using this as a source of information as I go through everything with you. So this way you can take it, share it, correct me if I'm wrong. And again, disclaimer, I'm not a scientist. I'm just a consumer wanting to know what I'm putting on my face. 
So let's start off with Smashbox because that's what I've been using longest. So first off, I will say there was, there's nothing horrible in um, any of these products. Um, if the rating does go up, it's more because it's an irritant, something along those lines. So it's nothing that's deadly. So let's go through this. So to start off with the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Mist, it's made in Canada and it listed out 16 products or ingredients in the products or the product itself. So this is what it looks like. It's just clear water. So of course the first um, product is water. Now the one thing I have to say, and I have no idea how to figure this out, and this does ha play a big role in um, what is in the bottle. I don't know the proportions. So if it says water in Smashbox and water in Elf, it may be 90% in Smashbox, but it might be 95% water in Elf. I have no way of knowing the percentage, the breakdown of the ingredients in the products. All I can go by is what is listed first, because usually the pro um, usually the item listed first has the is the most ingredient, the highest ingredient, most of that ingredient, I guess you should say. So for Smashbox, um, it, it starts with water, and water is water. The second product is interesting. It's called Butylene Glycol, which I found out is um, a cheaper form of glycerin. So it's like a chemically widely used cheaper form of glycerin. So you know how everybody was on the um, shave lotion with the glycerin in it? Well, that's the second product in Smashbox. The third product in Smashbox this is a little bit controversial. It lists caffeine. And it's listed as um, on EWG site as a skin conditioning agent. Uh, when I did a, additional research as I was Googling some products, um, it seems like people are on the fence about caffeine and, and its effect on um, the face itself. It appears that when it's introduced to a product, when it's in a clear liquid bottle, it tends to break down very easily. So any effects you may potentially get from caffeine diminish over time. So basically, in layman's terms, if you put your cup in your car, brew some coffee, let it cool a little, splash it on your face, you might see some benefits. Over time, for a few months, it might diminish in a product like this. So again, I think caffeine is one of those products that are on the fence whether or not it truly is beneficial in skin care. Now the remaining products as I go down is it's filler products. It's uh, viscosity controlling, it's magnesium chloride, viscosity control, potassium nitrate, um, which is very strange. It's it's reported that it's in toothpaste and sun, sunscreens quite often. So I guess maybe sunscreen. It doesn't list that it's in a sunscreen. In fact, the claims that it has is, where is it on here? Silicone, alcohol, and oil free. And that's all it, it claims to be. So it's just interesting that it has an ingredient that is mainly found in toothpaste and sunscreens. Now the next product is probably the more, con one of the more controversial Polysorbate 80, which EWC listed as a 3. The ratings 1 to 2 are low, 3 to 6 are moderate, and 7 to 10 are high. So that's where they rate where their concerns are. So this being a 3, so it's a moderate concern um, for this particular ingredient. And it's, it refers to this product polysorbate 80 as a sulfactant. And I had to look up what a sulfactant is. 
And apparently surfactants are found in shampoos and they've reduced the surface tension of water to help it spread and move around the hair to help remove the oils from and dirt from the hair. So this polysorbate 80, I guess, is just an ingredient that helps move the other ingredients around in the bottle when you missed it. That's what I'm taking from, again, non-chemist. Tenth product, and this is really interesting, diamond powder. Now, when I looked up what other products contained diamond powder, it was primarily nail polish. So, diamond powder functions as an abrasive, so I don't understand why that would be in this Smashbox Primer Water. The only thing I could think is, because it is a primer, um, and I'm, I'm going back to my nails days where you would put acrylics on, you would put a primer, and it would help um, lift the scales of your nails so it accepts the plastic primer. So maybe it it does something similar. To, it, it it primes your face. So maybe that's one of the primer functions. I don't know, but it does list it as a, it's rated one, so it's low, but it's still an abrasive. And the twelfth product is one of the higher rated rated items from EWG. It was a six, which means it's um, still high moderate. And it's a perfuming agent, and that is limonene, L-I-M-O-N-E-N-E. -E. So it's it's rated as six, basically basically because it's an irritant to your eyes. So strangely enough, you're spraying something on your face that's an irritant to your eyes. So be careful and close your eyes. The thirteenth ingredient, linalool is a deodorant masking agent and when I looked it up it's basically in everything shampoo conditioner styling gel sunscreen moisturizer lipsticks makeup so it's in everything so even though EWG lists it as a five which is a moderate um, rating I think it's more because it may have irritants in it so it also lists if it's a carcinogen, so there wasn't anything that flagged me to say, oh my god, there's something wrong, and I should I should not be using this product, therefore you shouldn't. So primarily it's a probably an irritant. The 14th product, Citral, is the highest rating ever, and it actually goes into the high range. And basically it's a fragrance. So, um... Again, it's listed as an allergen, so you could potentially be allergic to citral or another type of ingredients that's similar to citral and react to this. So, more of an allergy issue than a being a health issue using this product. The 15th product is phenoxthenol. And it has a rating of four, and it's basically a preservative, um, and it's a general preservative in cosmetics and skincare products. The final product, sodium benzoate, um, EWG gave it a three, which is moderate. Um, I had I had trouble finding background on it. I referred to um, Paula's Choice. She has a um, Cosmetic Dictionary, very interesting as well. Um, she rates it as a good product. Basically, it's um, naturally found in cranberries, prunes, plums, cinnamon, cloves, apples, whatnot. And again, it's a preservative used in cosmetics and personal care products. So basically, in summary, it's water, glycerin, preservatives, weird things like diamond powder, and a few things you could be allergic to for $32. So, okay, that's Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. So now we'll go to ELF. ELF claims that this is a 
silicon and alcohol free products. So it doesn't say oil free, which may be important for some, maybe not for others. Strangely enough, um, first two products in the e.l.f. product are the same as in Smashbox. Let me back up a little. The e.l.f. Primer Mist is $8 for 1.01 ounce, and it's made in China. First ingredient, water. Second ingredient is the butylin glycol, which is glycerin, the chemical, the cheaper grade glycerin that is found in cosmetics. The third product in um, the e.l.f. product is called hydroasphotine. I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> Refer to the list. Uh, EWG rates it as a 1. It's, it's just uh, an additional item found in uh, eye cream, sunscreens, um, it listed Safeway and Up and Up su sunscreens. So it's a product that's readily found in other products as well. Wasn't quite clear it, of its function. So that concerns me a little that this third product, I couldn't get too much data on exactly what um, it, it functions as. And EWG's site will list that too, that they may rate something because they don't have enough data. So the fourth product in um, this e.l.f. product is interesting. I had to refer to cosmeticsinfo.org to get some background on it. Um, EWG did not have information on it and it could be because it's a newer product and maybe not in the system yet. But basically this 1-2-hexanidol. We'll leave it at that. Number four. Um, basically, uh, it's one particular ingredient where if the carbons change, it becomes something else. So that's the whole chemistry thing. Um, it seems like it's used as a conditioning agent and a particular level of it is used as a skin conditioning agent. So... Again, it sounds like it's more of the fillers that I sp spoke of earlier that's in the smash box. I guess, you know, the butylin glycol, the glycerin is the moisturizer, but we have to have something that stabilizes that product. So I think taken from what I got from that other website, that's what I believe it to be. The fifth Pro, um, item is ni niamycin, niacinamide, ni ni niacinamide, and it's a hair conditioning agent, skin conditioning agent, and um, EWG lists it as a one, so no problem. Seven sodium chloride. Um, it's an oral care agent. Um, it's also known as rock salt, apparently. So that's sodium chloride. So ELF has rock salt in it. <laughs> Tenth ingredient, COSEP-7. Um, it's a glycol derivative of coconufera coconut. It's a sulfactant emulsifying agent. And sulfactant, again, is one of those products that help smooth the oil around or help move the product around. So again, a filler that moves product around from what I take. So that's the COSET 7, but it's made from a coconut derivative. So I think that's why they don't list oil free because coconut oil, I think. 12th item, PEG 40 hydrogenated castor oil. Again, it's a surfactant and it's also perfuming. So filler, perfuming, helps move it around um, on your face and, and move the other products around to, uh, so it's easily applied. 
Um, Thirteenth item is toco tocopheryl acetate. Um, this is actually vitamin E, and it does list vitamin E in here. It also lists uh, vitamin B, but I couldn't find vitamin B, so it might have been something that I mentioned previously. So we do have um, vitamin E in that tocopheryl acetate with parentheses VE, which I think means vegan. I'm not sure. The 14th product is... I could go say it in Latin, but I'm going to say cucumber extract. So, um, again, um, a product, a natural product, skin conditioning. We know cucumbers are good for our skin, so I'm happy to see that in here. But again, it's very low. The 15th ingredient, sodium hyaluronate. Interesting now. Basically, sodium hyaluronate is the sodium salt of the hyaluronic acid, a naturally occurring polysaccharinate found in connective tissues such as cartilage, derived from animal sources. It's a humectant and a skin conditioning. So basically, it's a hyaluronic acid, but it's not human hyaluronic acid. It's animal hyaluronic acid. That's what I'm taking it as. And then the 16th item, uh, a big word, alginate, skin conditioning. Okay. Last product in ELF is caffeine. And again, I discussed that um, what I found about caffeine in skin products is that we really don't know enough about it yet, and it's unstable in certain sources. So, that being said, we have two different products. Very similar. First two products are the same. Both have filler in them. One may be slightly more irritating. One may have some better stuff in it, but way on the bottom of the list. So, which do you use? Okay, so let's, let's look at some facts about two of these products now. This guy is $32 for 3.9 ounces, so basically 4 ounces. This guy is $8 for 1.01 ounces. Basically, they're the same price. They're $8 an ounce. So I'll leave it at that, absorb that in for a moment. So, take into, into consideration the price. They both have fillers, both have things that could be irritating. Uh, both could have some newly discovered uh, new uh, chemicals on the market we don't know enough about yet. So what do we do? Do we use it? I probably will, but I did find out something that I thought was really, really interesting. As I was doing my research, I came across uh, a video on YouTube, a do-it-yourself Smashbox Primer Water Dupe. With simple everyday ingredients, you can create your own Smashbox Primer Water Mist and actually um, alter it slightly for, um, if you have congested skin, you could use some um, essential oils like uh, tea tree oil. Or there is certain forms of like hyaluronic acid you could get in a liquid form and add to. So what I'm going to do is on the doc that I listed below, I will list the YouTube video below to give credit to Vassar Beauty. Um, let me just pull that up. So I found this video. Where's her name? Vassar Beauty. And she has this do-it-yourself 
Smashbox Water Primer Dupe. So thank you to Miss Vassar. Um, I don't know her, I don't remember her first name, but her mom works in the industry and helped her um, come up with this recipe. So I will link that below. So full credit goes to her. Thank you so much for that. And I will list her video below and it contains the recipe and I will include the recipe on my doc as well. So basically, you know what? I think I may just give it a try and create my own. So if you want to continue on using it, basically just remember if you're spending $32 on this, you still have to buy four of these to equal this. So it's up to you what you want to do. So I may try that do it yourself. So in summary, that's not what I thought I would come up with, but this is what I came up with. So that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm sorry. Remember, please, in the comments, I am not a chemist. I do not know how to pronounce half of these words. Um, I will list the sites below that I referenced. Um, in the doc, it will also contain it. So p please feel free. If you disagree with me, look it up. You can maybe form another opinion. Maybe we can alter that and bond and come together and come up with a better conclusion. So that's it, and I guess I will talk to you soon. Bye.